save. All right, so we're creating a new document. We're gonna take a, a deeper look at the new document window here. At the top, we're talking, we're trying to um, tell InDesign our intent for this project, whatever we're about to work on. What's the final use of your document? Um, is it gonna be print? Is it gonna be web? Is it gonna be mobile? And those are our three main choices when we're making a new document. Um, a print um, is what we are going to use for our class, for purposes of our class. Click on print. Um, that sets me up in the right color mode and um, resolution for a printed piece. Uh, and then InDesign tries to offer you some templates, some different things that you could use. And like I said, to me it's a little bit too much, but maybe there's something in there that you could you could repurpose uh, for something that you're working on. So go ahead and give those um, a look. Uh, then there's some presets that are listed here. Um, okay, so um, where we need to make most of our decisions is in this right-hand column. And all of the programs for um, Adobe with their new dialog box look very similar to this. So intent across the top and then make all your decisions in the column on the right. Um, what I don't like about it is that if um, you have this stuff expanded, you have to think to scroll up or down to make all of your decisions. So on the right, uh, right at the top, it's, it's giving us a title. Um, it's giving us a title of an untitled document. Uh, we can put a title in there, but what this is really um, sort of representing is presets. And that's what this little old fashioned save symbol looks, uh, is, is telling us. We could save the presets. Once we've set something up, we could save it as a preset and then bring it up at another time. All right, right below that we have, I'm gonna go over to units on the right here. Now units, um, we saw in the preferences, it was called units and in increments. It's basically, um, what measurement you're using as you're making a new document. And usually when I say print, it defaults to points or picas, which is normal for InDesign, um, but it's not normal for you guys. You guys are probably used to inches, so we can change it right here, put it right into inches, uh, and make that work for us. The default um, Preset is always an eight and a half by 11 inch paper that is, uh, an, has an orientation of portrait. Um, and that's absolutely fine, uh, but we can put in whatever we like there. I'm gonna leave it at eight and a half by 11 for right now. I'm gonna leave it at portrait orientation. That's our choices are portrait and landscape. I'm gonna go down a little bit more and where it says pages, it's asking you how many pages would you like in your document? I'm gonna type in three. Uh, the first document we're gonna make, we're gonna make individual pages. So it looks more like Word than it looks like InDesign. Um, just so I can show you the difference, we'll illustrate it a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna start with three pages. Uh, to the right of the number of pages is this magical feature called Facing Pages. It's on by default. We're going to uncheck it or click on it so that it is not checked anymore. Um, uncheck it is not actually a word. Spell check keeps trying to correct that on me. So um, I guess I, I need to, you know, start a petition and get people to sign it and send it into Webster's Dictionary or something to get that accepted. Uh, but right now, uncheck it is not an actual word. Uh, so I turned off facing pages. I'll explain those in a minute. And then I'm just going to move down a little bit here to columns. So we're going to take this slow. Let's just work with columns and pages for right now. For columns, this is um, a way for InDesign to um, measure out and give some guidelines for um, a number of columns on your page, so columns of type. Um, it doesn't actually put a text column in, it just gives you guidelines marking where they should go. It's doing the math for you, and I really appreciate that on my, from my point of view. 
make it four columns. Now every column has to have a space between it before it hits the next column. If you don't have enough space between your columns, um, people don't know to end at that word and move down to the next line. And uh, you'd be surprised how easy it is to mess that up. So um, they're giving you a very uh, small, like 12 point um, gutter. I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, that's the default. It's very small. It's the bare minimum, in my opinion, that you need. You might want to go a little bigger. But we'll go with uh, that for now. Uh, right below columns, you should see margins. And if it isn't open, hit the little toggle arrow on the left of the word margins. You should see top, bottom, left, and right. Now, because we aren't using facing pages, we get a left and a right. And I, I should um, also mention column gutter. Uh, gutter is the word um, describing the space between the columns. Um, we'll see that word come up again um, when we're talking about pages that are connected to each other. There's a gutter there where you don't want your text to go. Um, so we'll, we'll see that term come up again. Um, margins are the space around the ed edges of your page. Uh, they mark the safe area for your text. You don't want to get your text too close to the edges of the document because more than likely they're going to get lost, they're going to be overlapping or touching something, um, or they're going to get trimmed away when all is printed and, and cut all at one time. So you need a, a half inch margin is pretty safe. Um, you need to keep important text, the body of your story, away from the edges of the document. It's also nice and clean, provides a nice clean resting area for the eye. Um, and it looks so much more professional than having paid the words go all the way across the page without any consideration for those edges. Um, so we'll leave it at half an inch and then we'll get a little more technical with it on our next document. Okay, that's everything I wanted to say in this document. Let's hit the create button and let's see what we got. Alrighty. So hopefully everybody got um, a single page with some column markers. Uh, the magenta and purple lines um, are marking the margins on the outside and then the columns on the inside. And what it did was it divided up the space between the margins uh, by four and it considered three equal size gutters. And what you could do with that is you could take your type tool and using the margins and the um, column guides, you can click and drag. It should snap right to it. Click and drag out a text frame. I'll make one that's a little too short so you can see it. Okay, so I can click and drag out my text frames. Pages panel has uh, individual pages here, page one, page two, page three. This looks just like Word. Now I wish Word had a pages panel. You can add as many pages as you want. You can take pages away. Um, you, can, you can delete pages. Um, you can move pages. You can shuffle them. You can copy them or move them into other documents if you want. Um, all with the Pages panel. Um, Microsoft Word makes me nuts because it adds a page when it wants to. You have to hit a return, and then it doesn't return where you want it to. And then you want that second page to go away, and it won't take it away. It just makes me crazy. So I prefer InDesign because I have more control over what's happening. And the Pages panel is my friend. All right, so individual pages is uh, what we created so far. We gave ourselves some column markers, our text frames we drew out using those uh, margins and column markers. Um, I think what I want to do then is to show you um, a little bit of information here. So a single page or a one piece of paper 
is referred to as a page. That's all it is. So that's what we just created were three individual pages. Um, in InDesign, we can create spreads. Um, that means two pages or more uh, together. They're fused together by a spine in the middle. That spine is where you bind the book or, or magazine or you fold it together. Um, so it's a left-hand page and a right-hand page fused together by a spine. If you were to fold that closed, you know, close up your book or magazine, those pages are touching face-to-face. -face. So that's where the term facing pages comes from. So anything more than a page, two or three or four or five or six pages together is a spread. We are going to work with two page spreads mostly in the intro course. So we'll see this term show up in InDesign. We'll see that show up in InDesign as well. And then we will see the magical fairy dust that we call facing pages that exist in um, in design, we just turned it off a minute ago. We're going to turn it back on. Um, it, it helps create and keep spreads within a document. It also means that if you try to take this page away, another page either shuffles up into its position, or if you took this page away, uh, this page will move over there, or if you add a page, it'll shuffle pages down. Let's make another new document. And this time we'll go from the File New menu. And I just want to do that at least once so I could show you that there are some other options of what you're making. Um, InDesign has other options. The other programs do not. They have just document, um, make a new document. Um, InDesign has three choices. So there's document, which we're going to use. There's a book, which is an advanced feature. And there's a library. In case uh, you want to make a library for a, per a particular project, um, you're going to be like doing a catalog that you're going to have to redo next year. And you know, every once a year, you got to redo this catalog. And you're going to be using similar artwork each time. So you want your little uh, logos and you want your web addresses and all that stuff. You can make those things and then save them into a library that you make and associate with that project. You can open up that library in any InDesign document. Um, the book will be uh, covered in the intermediate class. Basically, you're making a huge uh, InDesign document. So you have, you have chapters or sections of a book uh, put together or a huge catalog put together, but they're individual InDesign documents. You put them together in a book, um, and that's a panel that manages all those files for you. You can update it. You can change page numbers. You can move things around. It's really super awesome. And if you are working on big projects like catalogs, magazines, and, and books, um, this would be a wonderful thing to learn about. All right, we're going to choose new document. Okay, we get our old buddy, the uh, new document window. We're going to select print again as our intent. So we're in the right color mode and resolution. Um, over on the right, we will do things a little differently this time. Uh, let's make a document that is, um, let's go, let's go seven and a half by 10. Okay. Um, just for, well, let's leave, let's leave it, um, portrait orientation for now. Uh, let's go down to pages. Uh, this time we want to have four pages. I'm looking for two spreads. Um, it's not what we're going to get, but let's, let's just try it out. Let's see what InDesign normally looks like. All right, our facing pages, our magical fairy dust is on. We're going to leave it on. Let's skip the start number, go down to columns. On this, I would like just two columns. Let's go with just two columns. Um, I'm going to leave the column gutter for a second there. I'll leave that just fine. And then margins, let's try something a little different with the margins. Um, Right now, all four margins are set up 
to be the same. Um, they all see the same, but because this little link symbol on the side is visible, it makes it makes all settings the same. So whatever I type into one, it's going to make all four fields the same. So if I want to change this up, I'm going to turn that off by clicking on it, and it looks like a squashed bug, you know, with the cut, guts coming out. It's about the best description I've got for you. Uh, <laughs> So let's see, top margin, I'll leave that at a half an inch. Um, bottom, I'm going to go a little higher. I'm going to go with one click up, which is 0.625 inches. Um, it's hard for me to think inches, so um, I can't picture what that is. It's more than half an inch, so that should be good. Um, instead of having left and right, we have inside and outside because we're going to get a spread. Um, so what does inside and outside refer to? Remember those two pages fused together by the spine. Um, the space between the spine and the margin on your page uh, needs to be pretty decent. It needs to be a pretty decent space. This is also called a gutter. Um, if you have a project with, say, like a Harry Potter book, 400 pages in it, um, the closer you get to the middle of the book, the more likely your text is going to get stuck in the gutter where the spine is, where the pages fold, um, and people won't be able to read that text. So you want to have a decent inside, um, uh, a decent inside margin to keep that from happening. Margins mark the safe area for your body of text. So let's click up one on that, and that's making me want to go to the bottom one here and click one more. Yeah, let's get 0.75 in there, three quarters of an inch. I can kind of picture that for the bottom, and then 0.625 for the inside margin. We're going to go a little bit further now, and we're going to look at bleed and slug. Bleed and slug. I'm going to click to twirl open that little area. We'll talk about bleed first, and we'll get to slug second. Bleed is essential. Um, it has to be there for any printed piece. Um, let's say you're going to print flyers or posters or postcards out at a professional printer, and you want color or image to go all the way to the edge of your document. A little bit like this orange one that they're showing on the screen here. The color is going all the way to the edge, or this bar is all the way to the bottom edge and the two sides. Um, if you want your color to touch the edges, you actually have to pull it out further than the edge of the paper. More than likely, a professional printer is printing on bigger sheets of paper than you are using in, on your, um, in your InDesign document. Um, they print on bigger paper, they more of them together on bigger paper, and then they trim them down. We have to have that color or, or um, image pulled out at least an eighth of an inch in order to avoid trimming inconsistencies. Because if it shifts around and you don't have a bleed there, when they go to cut it, you're going to have a white gap on the edge, and you're not going to want that. Um, it's going to look very unprofessional. So if you want color or image to go all the way to the edge, you have to include a bleed. Industry standard is an eighth of an inch, which is one click up, and it should be the same on all four sides, top, bottom, inside, outside. Okay, and there is a make all the same button there. I would recommend keeping that one on. Um, so at least an eighth of an inch, 0.125 inches. If you're into points like me, that's nine points um, and pretty, pretty decent amount. Okay, so we've got all of our settings. Let's hit create and let's see what we get. All right, so we've got a document, but hey, where'd my spreads go? I wanted spreads, didn't I? Well, let's take a look at this. In the Pages panel, we've got an individual page on the right side of the spine. That's what this black vertical line is. 
as it's a representation of the spine. And page one always starts on the right side of the spine. Page one could be the cover. Page one could be the title page. Page one could be the table of contents or even the first page of the um, chapter. Um, but if you think about it, that's how books are. It always starts on the right side of the spine. Excuse me, for page one. So our odd numbers are always going to be on that right side. If I scroll down, or I can double click in my uh, pages panel um, on the 2-3, I will see that the next page, the even number, is on the left side of the spine. And then there's another odd number on the right side. So two and three are together um, with the spine down the middle, where it's going to fold, where it's going to hook together. Uh, and then it ends with page four being an even number again. Um, it could be the back cover. It could be the last page of a chapter. It could be um, the credits page or, or the, the appendix at the end, um, or the index maybe, I don't know. Um, so even numbers are always on the left side of the spine. So this is a normal document in InDesign. If we were doing a four-page document, maybe we were going to do a, um, a letter-sized uh, newsletter that was four pages. Instead of having four individual pages, you would print on 11 by 17 paper and fold it in half. So you'd need a front cover, an inside spread, and a back cover to make that work. Uh, let's also take a look at um, around the outside here. Okay, so first we have our purple and uh, magenta lines marking our margins. That's where our, the, the safe area for our text to be. We have some column guides helping us get a gutter in there. And this time I'm going to click and drag to make my text frames. Just like that. And I'm going to go a little bit further this time. I'm going to switch to my regular selection tool. I'm going to click on that left uh, text frame. And when I do, I can see the bounding box handles that we talked about last week around the outside. But I also see this additional um, square, slightly larger, um, looks like in large glands, I, I always say. Um, <laughs> It's, it's the import for the text. Um, only text frames have an import and an outport. The outport is on the lower right side. Uh, we use those to put uh, text into one frame and then flow it into the next frame so that they are connected and the text flows one to the next. Um, I'm going to show you how to do this now. We will do it again and again as the weeks progress just so you get used to it, okay? You do not use the type tool. If you have the type tool active, you will not see these little uh, ports. So it's a regular selection tool. If we go down to this lower right hand side and we click on the enlarged gland, the out port of this frame, click once with your cursor, move it away, and you'll see there's a blue arrowhead inside of that uh, outport. You get a little greeking of a text, meaning it's a text frame you're threading. Um, all I have to do is go over to this second column that I made and I get a, a different symbol, a, a little link, chain link there. All I have to do is click inside that frame and it has connected the left um, column to the right column. I know because there's now a blue arrow in the import. Um, how else could you see that? It's very simple. Under View, Extras, Show Text Threads. We'll show you how those are connected. I'm going to put a little text in here just so we can see a little bit further, a little bit more. Um, a good place to get text, um, all I did was uh, click back into the original, uh, the left-hand column. 
I'm going to go to the type menu, type pull down menu, and all the way, almost all the way to the bottom, second from last, fill with placeholder text. All right. Now, if my frames were not threaded together ahead of time, before I said placeholder text, the text would have stopped at the end of this um, first column. So I had to thread them together first. I just wanted to do this to illustrate the difference between some of the frames, uh, especially the text frames. So now I come back with my regular selection tool. And if I shorten this column on the left, the text flows over into the column on the right. Um, it, it just pushes it over there. And if I were to, say, delete some of the text or trim some of the text, I think we like to call it trim, um, get rid of that, uh, it will then push text from the right-hand column up into the left-hand column, and it will be shorter on the right-hand side. Um, that's just the way it works. Um, so this is... This is very typical of um, how you would work in InDesign. Uh, a lot of times people come to me with, I need this by tomorrow, but I don't have the content yet. Can you rough something up? So I'm using what, what we call lorem ipsum or, or placeholder text. Um, it's, it's, I think it's actually Latin. Um, it's a, a story that is out of copyright. It's, it's super old. Um, days of old kind of a, a story and then you get a different part of it every time you put in placeholder text so all of us will have something different um, on our screen uh, but it's a good way to, to practice to get yourself um, functional um, making sure that your text frames are set up and ready to go okay now you see there's a nice clean white area between my or around the outside edges of my um, text frames um, that's the important body copy. It shouldn't be close to the edge. It could get trimmed away on by mistake or on accident. Uh, so it's, it's safer to have a good margin. Um, they're all different on this one. Uh, we have less on the top and less on the inside, but more on the bottom and more on the outside. Or excuse me, this is the outside. That's the inside because that's a right hand page. There we go. So here you'll see in our spread, we've got a pretty good sized gutter on the um, inside area, the margins marking where it's safe to put the text. Um, you can have things like a page number or what, whatnot um, outside of the margins. Nobody really cares if that gets cut off. It's not going to end. Uh, you, know, you, you want your important information to get to people. Page number isn't that important. Your web address isn't that important. I mean, it is, but it isn't. Uh, it, it, they can get it on another page. So those can be outside the margins. Um, that's no problem. All right. The other thing that's here is that red line around the outside. That is our bleed. That is our bleed. And how does that work? Well, if you're going to have color image go all the way to the edge, let's get our rectangle tool, the regular one. Just going to make a big rectangle on my left hand page here. I'm going to switch to my selection tool. Okay, there we go. My regular selection tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each bounding box corner and pull it out to the bleed. All right, I'm just going to pull it to the spine in the middle. There is a bleed there, but we can't really see it. I'm going to click and pull down to uh, take that out to the bleed. Now, what, what purpose could this possibly serve for us? Well, we just need to fill it with a color. Um, anytime you want to apply a color to anything, a uh, frame of any kind, um, or even type, you have to go to the swatches panel. And make sure that my fill is forward. That's all four corners are visible. I'm just going to pick this first cyan that's here. There's not much in your swatches panel to begin with. Um, it's kind of forcing you to make or pick your own colors, um, which is, is what you should do um, to look as professional as you can. 
All right, uh, so I put some color in there and you can see it's going off the edge of the page. It's going all the way off the edge of the page. Um, and when I go to print it, I'm going to need to turn on um, and I'm going to need to turn on the bleed so that it prints with the document. And if I export this to a PDF to send to a printer, I'm going to need to turn on the bleed to export with the file uh, to go to the printer. Uh, okay. So the black line around the outside edge of our InDesign document, that is marking the trim or the page size. In, uh, in the industry of print, it is referred to as the trim size. In InDesign, they call it page size. So it's the final size of the printed page after excess edges have been trimmed away. Um, it is outlined in black in InDesign. The margins were marked in magenta and purple. They mark the safe area for your text to be. You don't want to get too close. I'd say a quarter of an inch is as close as you can get to the edge without being nervous that you're going to lose um, some important information. So definitely um, get in the habit of including that margin and then using it. Um, definitely use it. Follow, follow the, the rules and things will go well for you. Okay, um, the bleed is that area that extends outside the trim's edge, the trim edge of the page, or the page's edge, I guess. Um, it's marked in red around the outside of the document, and it's telling you pull the color all the way to that point. Um, anywhere I have this little blue uh, filigree leaf thing running off the page, um, I need to make sure that it is pulled out to the bleed, pulled out to the bleed. Sometimes you have to extend it. Sometimes you have to make it bigger. Um, sometimes you have to color it in yourself. Uh, but you got to make sure there's a bleed there. Um, is, it's sort of a CYA, but it's, it's also very expensive to reprint. Um, and you don't want to have to have the printer fix it for you. Um, they cost a lot as well. Um, let's get it right from the beginning, and then there won't be any issue. Okay. Um, because we have a bleed, because we have color image going out to the edge, we need to include crop marks when we are printing out for ourselves or sending to um, a professional uh, print service um, print provider. Uh, crop marks then will indicate where the page's edge should be. So they are outside of the bleed. And the idea is that you could put a ruler down to line up with two of those lines and then take your X-Acto knife and go and you get a nice clean cut. Um, you want to have a metal ruler if you're going to do that. Uh, paper cutters are not very good. Um, I do not like them. A roto cutter would be good, but uh, those big massive, you know, choppy page cutters, not so good. Uh, anyway, you need those two lines to mark where the edge of the page is. Uh, if your printer is printing for you, they need those um, crop marks to help them position the uh, image, the PDF of your, your file within uh, their, their template. Um, so they're going to put it into printer spreads or they're going to do something like 10 business cards on one piece of paper um, and they're going to line them all up according to those crop marks. So those are something in, important to include. The only other thing we haven't gotten to yet is slug area, and I'm going to do that next. Slug is a non-printing area. You can choose for it to print, just like bleed. Bleed doesn't print unless you tell it to. Um, but a slug is there for notes to yourself or to someone else you're working with in InDesign, or um, they can be what I've seen them used for um, more recently is when a number of people need to sign off approval on the work that's uh, been done. Um, put their initials in here or put their names in here in this slug area. Choose to print the slug area and then when, 
what what studies have shown <laughs> is that when you actually have to sign your initials or name to something, you take the time to make sure it's right. If you don't have to, you know, you don't have any responsibility there. Um, oh yeah, I saw that when I sent it out as a PDF. I don't need to double check that. Um, then something's going to go wrong. Uh, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, something's going to be wrong and it's going to come back and either the printer's going to eat the cost or you're going to eat the cost. That's all I want are two spreads where there's a left and a right hand page together. How can I do that? Well, you can do that. We could even change this existing document to do that. But we're, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a new document. Okay. So another way to make a new document is it, when you're already in InDesign is to hit the little home button up in the application bar at the top. Hit the home button. It takes you back to the welcome screen. We'll hit create new again. I'm going to click on print as my intent, as I usually do. I'll come over here to this uh, window on the right, the column on the right, and I'm going to make my changes here. Let's go with um, let's go with a five by seven, except I'm going to make it. Why does it do that? Okay, five by seven, except I'm going to make it uh, landscape landscape this time. So five by seven, I hit landscape. It's going to switch the height and the width around for me. So it's seven by five. Absolutely fine. That's what I want. Okay. I want four pages. I want a total of two spreads. So what am I going to do differently? I'm leaving facing pages. That's our magical fairy dust. I'm going to move down to the start number. We've skipped over this twice now. We're going to look at it this time. Start page numbering at what? We start at one. What happens to the odd number of pages? The odd numbered pages. They go on the right side of the spine. Even page numbers go on the left side of the spine. Let's try starting with an even number. We'll go with page two. Let's see what happens. As far as columns, let's go with three columns. Um, this time I'm going to change the column gutter. Uh, just another demonstration of how versatile um, these Adobe programs are. Um, I'm in inches, but I don't know inches very well. Um, I know points. So if I highlight that whole amount under column gutter and I type in uh, 24PT, that's the shortcut for, or the abbreviation for points, 24 PT, and then click into another field. It's going to do the math and translate 24 points into inches for me. I didn't have to come up with that. I didn't have to do any, any thinking at all. I just typed in what I knew. Um, so if you get mixed instructions, just remember, highlight the inches too, and type in uh, whatever it is you need. If it's pike, is it's just P. If it's points, it's PT, um, inches, IN. Um, you, maybe you work in Cicero's, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I haven't met anybody that does. Um, I think that's a, um, uh, I think it's from Italy, uh, a measurement system, system in um, old Italy. All right, uh, margins, I'm gonna leave them alone this time. I'm gonna include a bleed. Click up once. I'll get that eighth of an inch in there. The new thing we were going to look at this time was the slug. Uh, the slug, you do not need it on all four sides. You only need it on one side. So either do like the right side or the bottom. I typically go with the bottom. So make sure that the make all the same is broken already. It looks like a squash bug with guts coming out. Then you're good. Then go to the bottom and it has to be more than the bleed. The bleed's an eighth of an inch. We need this to extend even farther than the bleed. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with 0.75, make it three quarters of an inch. That way I've got plenty of room to put whatever I need. Let's go ahead and create. And we have two spreads side by side, looking pretty good. 
Not bad at all. I've got a bleed around the outside. I've got three columns with 24 point um, gutters in there on a very small page size. That's pretty generous. Um, so I've got my margins, my uh, page edge or trim marks, my trim edges, um, and my uh, bleed marks all on there for me. And if I look in the pages panel, I have pages two and three together and four and five together. So if you just need spreads, start with an even number. Adjusting a document after you've made it. Okay, so um, I'm just going to put a do another bleed box here. And I'll just throw yellow in there. Ooh, yeah, that's bright. Okay. And then I'll just put some text here. And I'm, I'm only going to make one text frame. Here's another way that this works to thread. I'm going to use my regular selection tool, click on the outport, move over to the next column, and click and drag. It connects it to the previous column and allows you to draw a new text column. And I will click in the outport and go to the next area that's marked and use those column and margin markers to finish the job. Then I will put my placeholder text inside. Okay. All right, so let's say you've been working, you've got, you, you've got a few hours in on this project already, and then some, somebody decides, you know, I, I don't like, I don't like it being a uh, landscape, or I, I don't like this size, I want, I want a different size. Um, they want to make a change to a document you've already made. Um, you do not need to start over. You can change or adjust the document after it's made, um, by addressing two dialog boxes instead of just one, um, but it can be done after you've been working in the document. It can be done at any time, actually. Okay, so let's say in this document, they would like the page size to be uh, a bit different. Uh, so what do I do? Well, one of the di dialog boxes we need would come from uh, the file menu. So file, document setup, and here we have a number of the options we had in the new document dialog box. So our intent is print, our number of pages is four, we can change that, we can add stuff. Our start page number was two, that's absolutely fine, and we have fa facing pages. Very good. Let's say now that they've decided this needs to be a square book. So it needs to be seven by seven inches. So I'm gonna change the height right here. Oops, I did five again. Let's do seven. I'm gonna leave the margins as they are. I'll leave the bleed as it is. And I'll click um, OK. You don't need to hit adjust layout. Just click OK. It's gonna make the change for you. All the work that you've already done is still on the page. Now that adjust layout is another feature, it's a little more advanced, where you can tell in design how to treat the stuff that's already on the page. Uh, we won't get to that in this course. Um, you can do it through that document setup. Now what I couldn't change there um, were, were the number of columns. So if that's something I need to change, I need to go to a different uh, dialog box, a different screen. Um, so we had most everything from the new dialog box in that document set up. The only thing missing was columns. So where do we find columns? We find columns under layout, the pull down menu called layout. And you go down a little bit and you'll see the second option, margins and columns. It used to be that margins was the only, the only place you could find margins was in this box as well as the columns. But for some reason, they just recently moved it to the, the document setup window, which makes life easier. Okay, we could still change our margins here. Um, and maybe I will do that. Maybe I'll change the uh, top margin to be um, smaller. I'll go to a quarter of an inch. I broke the 
the link, and then I went to a quarter of an inch. All right, and I could see it moving back there on page two, because that's the page I have active. Then at the bottom, it says number of columns. Um, let's go to two columns, okay? So, so far, I'm seeing the changes happen in the background here, because I have my preview turned on. But what I'm noticing is nothing's happening to my right-hand page. Let's click OK. Let's take a look at it. All right, so here's something you may want to know. Um, file document setup. Margins there. If you change them here, it's changed for the entire document. Um, if you change it under layout margins and columns, it's only changing the page that's currently selected. So I'm currently on page two. It only changed it there. Um, if you want to change the margins and the columns, and you want to do it for the entire document, then I highly recommend you go to the master page. That's the next thing we're going to be talking about this evening. So the A master is listed in the pages panel. It's up here near the top, A master. Double click on the word, on the name. Don't click on the left or right hand pages because only one page is selected. Go double click on the name. Um, the only thing telling you that you're on a master page is that highlight you see there. And then at the bottom of our window, it'll say A master in the corner. Um, uh, Quark was the old program we used to use. It used to have this big gray symbol in the background telling you, hey, stupid, you're working on a master. Um, I wish that were here, but it isn't. Uh, so you got to pay attention to where you are in your pages panel. Um, now, if I make uh, a change from layout margins and columns, and I make that top margin smaller, oops, I went too far, quarter, quarter of an inch, and I change my number of columns to two and click OK. It changes both the right and left hand page um, together at the same time. And if I go back to my page two and three, I see those changes have been made. So little things that I have to do then are to, you know, get rid of a text frame, reposition and resize the ones I have in here. I can hold more text now. And you probably need a, a headline and stuff like that as well. So if you need to change the margin and the columns for the entire document, change it on a master page. That's the key thing there. Very light blue. You're not going to be able to see it on my screen. Very light blue line marking uh, three quarters of an inch down uh, below the, the edge of the page and below the um, bleed. Uh, that is my slug. There's nothing in it. If I want to put something in it, I have to get the type tool and put a text frame, you know, uh, print 3,000 copies and um, saddle stitch. It's a note. It's a message. It does not print unless you tell it to. And these will be these uh, options will be found in your print queue and in your export um, PDF menu.